Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at um, section 1.2, which is called operations with polynomials. So um, today we're going to be adding and subtracting, uh, multiplying polynomials, um, but mainly we're going to be factoring, and that's going to be huge, hugely important for this class. Um, a polynomial, this right here, this is an example of a binomial. 3x is a term. The number five is a term, and if you have um, more than one term, if you have two terms, you have a binomial. Down here, this is an example of a trinomial. We have three terms that are being added together. That's a trinomial. After that, we don't have fancy names for them. We don't have quadrinomials or pentanomials. We don't have those things, okay? So we just use the phrase polynomial to kind of encompass all of them. So we're going to start off with like adding and subtracting, and these should be pretty basic um, to you, adding at least. To add polynomials, you just combine like terms, okay? So if I have a 3x and I have a negative 5x, I'm going to combine those together to get a negative 2x. And if I have a positive 5 plus 5 and I have a negative 2, that's what the minus 2 is like, then I'm going to have a 3 and that is the answer to that addition problem. Okay, now, subtraction. Subtraction is a little trickier because what you're subtracting is all of this. You're subtracting this term from this and you're subtracting this term from this. In other words, you're distributing the subtraction. So I'm going to go ahead and write a line that does that. Negative 7x minus 5 and then minus 3x, and then minus negative 6 would be plus 6, and now I can just combine like terms like I'm used to. Now, you don't have to do this step. If you're someone here like, okay, I know I can distribute that, I know I would do that in my head just fine, then go ahead and do that, that's okay. Okay, but I'm gonna take negative 7x and minus 3x and get negative 10x. I'm gonna take the minus 5 and the plus 6, I'm gonna get a plus 1, and that is the answer to my subtraction problem, okay? These next three are going to be ones that you're going to do on your own after we get done, okay? Multiplying. I know you know how to multiply, but this top row, all of these are binomials being multiplied together. So a binomial times a binomial. At some point in your mathematical career, you probably were introduced to the word FOIL, which is just a mnemonic device to kind of help us keep track of the multiplication. Everything here needs to get multiplied to everything here. It's the distributive property. And FOIL is just a way to keep track of that multiplication. So for example, F means you multiply the first together. So in other words, the X gets distributed to the other X, which is X squared. Then you multiply the outer things together. So the x and the, and the minus 2. But again, all it's doing is it's reminding you to distribute that x over to the minus 2. And you're going to get a minus 2x. The i is you multiplying these inners together. So the 5 and the x. And then the last tells you to take the 5 and distribute it to the negative 2 and get a minus 10. Now... Whenever you multiply, when you FOIL, you can often combine these two middle terms. Okay, these are going to be like terms. This is a negative 2x and a 5x. So you're going to get an x squared, you're going to get a 3x, and you're going to get a minus 10. Now, I know that you know how to do that. Okay, and if I gave you 100 of these, you're probably going to get 99 of them right, and you'd probably make a silly mistake on the other one. But the concept of being able to multiply is going to help when I turn the page and we start to look at factoring. Okay, Factoring is the opposite of this process. It's taking a, in this case, a trinomial and breaking it down into what were the original things that were multiplied together to get this answer. Okay, So that's why we're taking the time to practice foiling so we can then get to the factoring, which is unfoiling. Think of it that way. Okay, um, all right, x minus 5 squared. 
If you have a binomial and you're squaring it, people will often make a mistake and they will distribute the square. They will square the x, they'll square the 5, and they'll call it a day. And that's not what you want to do. You want to realize that squaring something means to multiply it times itself. Okay, 6 squared means take 6 times 6. And that's what we're doing here. We're going to take these two things and multiply them together. Now, we're back to FOIL. x squared minus 5x minus 5x plus 25. These two middles are going to combine. Okay, so I'm taking the answer to the outer multiplication. I'm taking the answer to the inner multiplication. And I'm combining those together. When we get to the second page, you're going to hear me use the phrase oi a lot, because that's what that middle is. This is my oi, where I've taken the outer and the inner, and I've combined them together to create that new middle term. That's my oi. All right. Okay, next one. <clears throat> Again, this is just a straightforward uh, foil. 3x squared plus 3x minus 2x minus 2. 3x squared plus x minus 2, and we're all done. Okay, piece of cake. The next one is also a piece of cake, except for the numbers are a little bit bigger. Um, but these are a little special, so I wanted to give you an example of these. Um, 7x plus 9 times 7x minus 9. Now, go ahead and foil those on your own, and let's see what's going to happen. 7x times 7x is 49x squared. 7x times negative 9 is going to be negative 63x. But 9 times 7x is going to be positive 63x. So you probably see what's going to happen there. And then positive 9 and negative 9 are going to give you a minus 81. So when we simplify, these two middle terms are going to cancel each other out. Okay, because they're opposites of each other. So all we get are 49x squared minus 81. These original um, binomials have a special name. They are called conjugates. Conjugates. And conjugates are just binomials that are identical, except one has a plus and one has a minus, and that causes that middle term to cancel out. Now, 49x squared minus 81, that also has a special name. This is called a difference difference of squares. These two terms are perfect squares. 49x squared is a perfect square. 49 is 7 squared. And 81 is a perfect square. And if you have a difference of squares, the original two binomials were conjugates of each other to create that and to get that middle term to disappear on us. Now, like I said, the reason we practice some foiling is because the next thing that we need to do, um, which is extremely important for this class, is the ability to factor trinomials. Okay? So, I am going to show you right away, I'm going to show you two different ways of factoring. And I'm going to tell you, I do not care what method you use. I just want you to be able to factor correctly and get the correct, you know, like original binomials that multiply together to get this trinomial. Okay? Now, the first method I'm going to show you is called grouping. Okay? Factor by grouping. And this is probably what... Uh, you were taught in Algebra 2, and there's a reason they teach this in Algebra 2, and this is the method that they use. So let me let me show you this. Now, all I'm going to, well, let me just get started and I'll show you. For grouping, what you want to do is you want to take this trinomial and you want to split it into four terms. So you don't want three terms, you want four terms. So you're going to take this middle number and you're going to split it apart. But you have to split it apart in a very specific way. Okay, this is a negative 8. I could split this into negative 6 and negative 2. I could split it into negative 5 and negative 3. But there's only one right way to split this up. And how you come up with that right way is you take 
4 times 3, which is 12. And then you think of factors of 12 that will add up to give you negative 8. Okay, so factors of 12. First off, factors of 12, since it's a positive 12, it means both the terms have to be the same. So we're multiplying two numbers together that have um, the same sign. They're both positive or they're both negative. The fact that that's a negative 8 tells us that they're both going to be negative. So how about negative 6 and negative 2? Okay, negative 6 times negative 2 is positive 12. And negative 6 plus negative 2 is negative 8. So I'm going to split negative 8 into negative 6x and negative 2x. So 4x squared, that doesn't change, negative 6x, negative 2x, and then plus 3. So what we're doing is, we're doing, let me refer back, we're doing multiplication backwards. There's our answer. We're splitting it back into the four terms before we simplified and turned those into that. Okay, But there's only one correct way to split that number up into those two original numbers, and that's what this little sneaky thing over here did. Now, this is where I want to stop, where I started to say earlier. There's different ways to do this. There's people that draw squares, like they draw a square, um, and then they put the 4x four, the four squared in the upper corner, and they put the 3 in the lower corner. Um, you do an x, and you put the 4x squared on the top. There's different ways. It's all the same method, though. It's all factor by grouping. There's just different visual ways of doing this. Okay? Now, once you have these four terms, you're going to group the first two together, and you're going to factor out a greatest common factor. Both of these have a 2 in common, and they both have an x in common. So I'm going to factor out a 2x, and then that's going to leave me with 2x and then minus 3. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to factor these two together. I'm going to put those together. I'm going to group them. And then I'm going to factor out the greatest common factor. Well, 2x and 3 don't have anything in common. So the greatest common factor between them would be a 1. But here's where the trick comes in. I want what I'm left over with, this parenthesis, to be identical to this parenthesis. Now, if I just factor out a 1, this is going to be the opposite of that. I'm going to have a minus 2x and a plus 3. So we're going to factor out a negative 1. That, factoring a negative 1 from a negative 2x will give us a 2x. And factoring a negative 1 from a 3 will give us a minus 3. Now, we look at this together. The 2x minus 3 is a common factor that I could factor out. That will be your first answer. And then the 2x and the minus 1 is what's left over, so that's our second answer. A lot of you would probably write those in the opposite direction. You would just say, oh, the first two combine together to make my first term, and then these parentheses make my other term. It doesn't matter, but this is the one and only way of factoring this. Now, how could you check? How could you check to see if I'm correct? You could remultiply it. Okay, You could foil this. If you foil this, you're going to get 4x squared, you're going to get negative 2x, you're going to get negative 6x, and negative 2x and negative 6x are going to come together to give you the negative 8x, and then you're going to take the negative 3 and the negative 1 and you're going to 3. So yes, this is the absolutely correct way of factoring that original trinomial. Now, you can absolutely use this method. You're not usually going to see me use this method. Okay, this isn't what I do. What I do is something called guess and check. Now, a lot of students have a problem with that. They do not like the word guess when we're talking about mathematics. But it's, it's an educated guess. Let's say that. Okay, so here's what I know. I know that this trinomial is going to factor into two binomials. But I also know how that trinomial was created. I know that that 2x squared was created by multiplying these two first together. If I take what's in the beginning of the parentheses and multiply them together, I'm going to get 2x squared. 
But I also know there's only one way to multiply two things together to get 2x squared. Okay? 2 is a prime number. It's 1 times 2, or 2 times 1. That's, that's it. There's no other way to do that. And I know that both of these have to have an x to get that x squared. So I actually know half of my answer. 2x and x. It has to be. I absolutely know that those two numbers are 2x and x. I also know where this number comes from. This number is the result of multiplying the last. Okay, this is my first. This is my last. So this number is this times this. Okay, so what do those two numbers have to be? What is, what's the only way that you can multiply two numbers together to get 5? Well, 5 is a prime number. So it's either 5 times 1 or 1 times 5. Now, technically, it could also be negative 5 and negative 1. Okay, that could be a possibility. But in this case, I know that's not what's happening. And it all has to do with this number. This is what I talked about in the front. This is my oi. Okay, 7x. That's my oi. That's what you get when you combine your outer and your inner. If I multiply these two together, and I multiply these two together, and I add them together, I'm going to get 7x. So, this, these two numbers have to be a 5 and a 1. All I have to guess is where do I put the 5 and where do I put the 1? Okay, which one's which? So, let's think about it. If I put the 5 here and the 1 here, what's going to happen with these two binomials? Well, they're going to get multiplied together. I'm going to take 2x, and I'm going to take that 5, and I'm going to get a 10x. And then I'm going to take that 1 and that x, I'm going to get a 1x. And if you take a 10x and a 1x, you're not going to get a 7x. But what if I, okay. Remember, you're doing this in pencil. Okay, I'm doing it in pen so you can see better in the video. But in pencil, you would just guess. You would put a 1 there, you put a 5 there, and then you check it in your head real quick. You multiply the outer and the inner, and you see if they add up to be your middle. If they don't, switch them. Okay, so I'm going to switch them. I'm going to put the 5 here, and I'm going to put the 1 here. I want this outer and inner to add up to be a, a positive 7x, so I know they're both going to be positive. And then check. Check your outer, that's 2x. Check your inner, that'll give you 5x. And 2x and 5x is 7x. I know, because I checked, that this is the correct factoring of that trinomial. Now, if this makes sense to you, it's faster. Okay? This always works, though. It takes a little bit of time, um, but it always, always, always works. But in class, I don't always have this much time to stop in the middle of a problem to factor something. So I will normally factor things this way, okay, like this. 2x squared minus x minus 1. I just put down two sets of parentheses, and then I think my way through the problem. I know that 2x squared has to be a 2x and an x. I know that the only factors of negative 1, the only way you can multiply two numbers to get a negative 1 is if you have a positive 1 and a negative 1. So my only guessing is figuring out which of these is the positive 1 and which one is the negative 1. That's it. Okay, you got a 50-50 shot. Plug them in. Just plug them in and make a guess. If it works, when you check, then you're good. And if it doesn't, switch them. So I'm going to put... The positive one here, I'm going to put the negative one here. Why? Well, I kind of knew a trick. I'm looking at this all along. This is my oi. I know I want that to be a negative. So I wanted to make sure the 2 is going to multiply the negative, so I get a bigger negative number. And then the 1 and the x multiply, so I have a smaller positive number, and that should give me the negative x that I want. Well, 2x times negative 1 is negative 2x, so again... I'm checking my oi right here. That's all I'm doing. Check your oi. Negative 2x. The inner is positive 1x. And sure enough, that's going to equal negative x, which is the oi that I want in the original problem. So yes, I am correct. Okay, this is just me checking my factoring. Now, those are the biggies. You need to know how to do those. These examples are going to be a little different, like this, for example. This is not a, bino a trinomial. This is just a binomial. Okay, so just factor out a greatest common factor. That's it. Okay, what do they have in common? 
They both have a 2 because they're both even. They both have an x. What do you have left? Well, I have an x and I have a minus 3. We're done. That's all you have to do. Okay, look at the next one. That one's a trinomial, but it's also a trinomial that has a leading term of 1. Whenever you have a leading term of 1, this is always the method you use. Like, this is what they taught you in Algebra 1, how to factor. They would say you factor with an x and an x, and then you need factors of 16 that add up to 8, which would be 4 and 4. But there is another way of writing this. Okay, if these repeat, you could just write x plus 4 squared. You could also leave it like that. Okay, but then once they start putting numbers as leading coefficients, that's when they have to kind of teach you a different method. This little factoring factors of this that add to this don't, don't really work. Okay, so they teach you different methods. Grouping is what they teach you in um, Algebra 2, but this is what we will normally use in um, pre-cal, at least during my notes. I'll use guess and check. Okay, and then the last one. How about the last one? x squared minus 49. Now, again, this is not a trinomial. This is a binomial. And what we're missing is that middle term. Well, what happened to that middle term? Well, it canceled itself out when they foiled, and they left us with these two perfect squares. So again, this is the difference of squares. So it factors into two sets of parentheses. Those two sets of parentheses are going to be conjugates of each other. This is going to be an x. This is going to be an x. Factors of 49. This is going to be a 7. This is going to be a 7, because that's a perfect square but one of them is positive, one of them is negative, and that is your correct answer. So make sure you know how to factor. If you have any questions or if you are confused about factoring, please see me. Do not let yourself just not know how to factor. It will make this year very, very difficult. All right. Thank you.